Greetings. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host, and this is Community Forum. Ladies and gentlemen, again, we have another outstanding guest for you this evening, uh, uh, Mr. George Payne. Uh, he's a deacon at the Gideon Missionary Baptist Church in Waukegan, Illinois, where the pastor is Dr. Wade A. Stevenson. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Payne uh, has a personal uh, testimony that he want to uh, promulgate to, uh, to our audience. And uh, we're anxious to, uh, to let him have that opportunity. Greetings, uh, Deacon Payne. Good, good afternoon, uh, Dr. Brooks. I'm very happy to, uh, that you're taking literally from your time from your busy schedule to be with us on uh, Community uh, Forum because I will be listening along with my audience because I'm mm -hmm. anxious to hear about your, your per personal testimony. Um, you'll be talking to the world. Uh, this uh, uh, community forum uh, uh, is shown at Lake County, Cook County, and Kenosha County, mm -hmm. and it's online, so you can people can get it with Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Brooks at Dr. Brooks TV, mm -hmm. all over the world. Um, but I want you to um, uh, tell us about uh, Deacon. Pain. Well, Dr. Brooks, uh, first I'd like to uh, start out by saying I give all of my thanks to God, to my God, and uh, he's my all in all. And so I like to, I give all my personal thanks for whatever I am and whomever I am, and I give it credit to God. And so that's the first thing I want to get out. Okay. But, and secondly, Dr. Brooks, I want to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to come on to your uh, show here and, uh, and just tell a little bit uh, about myself and, and my life and what kind of background I've come from and all. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all in hopes to, uh, to help someone, Dr. Brooks, if there might be someone out there that may have had a similar struggler or may have probably had the same struggle that I had in life. Uh, and it, it might help them. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I'm a, I'm, I'm a country boy. I was born and raised in Arkansas, and uh, I was uh, reared with uh, three other siblings. I was four of us, and I was the oldest, m myself, and a twin. I have a twin sister, oh. and uh, her name is Georgia. Is she around here in this area? Uh, no, sir. She, she's residing in Texas right oh, now. She's okay. living in Texas. Okay. But uh, we stay close contact with one another. We, okay. we are always on the phone with each other and encouraging one another. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, Going back to you know my childhood life, uh, we was uh, we was out in the rural area, out in the country. You know, we was a farmer. My mother and my my father they uh, they wasn't sharecroppers, but they worked for uh, a fellow, okay. uh, a fellow by the name of Norman French. And uh, so my dad uh, he mostly did you know farm work, and my mother she she did housework okay. for the Frenches and took care of their children and so forth. Okay. And uh, they did the best that they could on bringing us up, you know. Okay. And so uh, uh, I often talk to people nowadays, you know, and, and, and tell them, uh, yeah, you know, I'm a country boy, but uh, after coming to certain cities and, and seeing how things go and, and went in there, I wouldn't trade the, the upbringing for, for anything in the world, Dr. Brooks. If I think if I had an opportunity to do it all over again, I would. Mm -hmm. Because at that point in time, you know, we was poor. We didn't, you know, didn't, uh, didn't have much, but we had each other. Mm -hmm. We had love. And my mother, uh, who's gone on to be with the Lord now, God bless her soul, uh, she, she really uh, had a hard time, you know, bringing us up. Um, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, you know, she, she uh, if it's all right to say, I was uh, born out of wedlock. Okay. You know, okay. my... My mother wasn't married to my father, and uh, my mother was reared by an auntie, so she didn't, she didn't like that too well. And uh, the auntie, this is a story that my mother told me and my twin, okay. that the auntie was so displeased with, with, with our mother that she wanted to take us down to a creek and throw us over in the creek. <laughs> and, uh, that was, and, and I believe that that was, that was a heart, but my mother cried her heart out to her, and, and asked her, please don't, you know, don't, don't destroy my children. Mm -hmm. And so uh, 
I, I say from hearing that story, then that was the first time that God spared my life. I'm, one, I'm a firm believer, Dr. Brooks, that uh, I'm not just here by coincidence. I'm here by God's divine uh, will, such as all of us. And uh, I feel that I'm, I'm more here because of the things that are uh, the path that he allowed me to go through, and, and I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Everyone um, is uh, born with a purpose-driven life. Mm -hmm. You're here for a purpose, and uh, God plants plan you here for a purpose. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know what, Dr. Brooks? Uh, for a long time, I didn't know what that purpose was. Okay. It was only after uh, me going through things in, 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 uh, in, in life, in life uh, was when I become to know. As a matter of fact, it was right after I became a deacon at Gideon Missionary Baptist Church, and and I said, well. Uh, my pastor teaches us well to study the Bible and so forth. And, uh, and I said, well, to myself, I said, I'm not, I'm not here to preach. I'm not a preacher. I'm not called to preach nor okay. teach. But my purpose in, in here is to testify, to give a testimony about the power of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, pest, that testimony has, uh, it has power in it. Uh, the numbers of things that God have allowed me to to come through, you know, I was, I wasn't always uh, doing what he wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, I learned that uh, after my life was spared, numerous of times, mm -hmm. that uh, I figured that's my purpose in life right now, is and, to be and a witness. one of these uh, challenging experiences that you've had uh, and, and that you uh, really trust God is that you are a double lung transplant. Yes, I am. Uh, that kind of amazes some people, and it, and it amazed me uh, somewhat. But, uh, you know, years ago, I would think 15, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. it wasn't so popular for a person to have a double lung transplant. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but yeah, I come by that uh, by having that nasty habit of cigarette smoking. I okay. started smoking young when I was at home still with my, my, my parents and uh, down in the South. And uh, I just smoked for, for some 30 some odd years. Wow. And uh, it finally, it took, it took its toehold on me. Uh, I developed uh, emphysema in the lungs. Okay. Uh, that emphysema, once I learned about it, it was, I was on oxygen. I had to be under doctor's care for oxygen and, and inhalers that, you know, to take inhalers to breathe. And so I struggled with that uh, for, for quite a long time. I first got diagnosis with uh, uh, pulmonary problems uh, back in 2000, 2001. Okay. And so I've been, uh, I've been dis on a disabled list, disability list since 2001. But uh, it was uh, cigarette smoking and then that, that was a dark part of my life. And this is what I was, uh, a part of my testimony that I want people to know that uh, there was a time in my life, Dr. Brooks, when I did what I call self-infliction on my own self. Okay. I've always been a kind person to other people, and still is, but I did self-infliction wounds, okay. meaning that I, I uh, in my childhood after I got grown in, in Arkansas and, I, and uh, I got married and I moved to Detroit and I started working for uh, Chrysler Motor. Okay. Up in Detroit, Michigan, and uh, my dad was there, and he was a foreman uh, mm -hmm. in, in Chrysler, and so he got me a job. He said, son, well, you got a wife now, you need a way to take care of her. Mm -hmm. And so he got me that job at Chrysler, and I worked uh, for Chrysler uh, from 1974 up until uh, uh, 2000 and, and uh, what, 1999, I, I'm sorry, I correct. 1999 mm -hmm. was when I left out of Chrysler. And at that time, uh, one of the reasons that I left Dr. Brooks because I, uh, I fell on hard times and I got addicted. Mm. I got addicted to drugs. And uh, that's a bad thing in life and it was something that I wouldn't wish on no person, nobody's life. But uh, I was, there was a period in Chrysler where we got laid off and we had a lot of idle time. It was a group of us that got transported from Detroit down to uh, St. Louis, Missouri, oh. out in Fenton, Missouri. And uh, we got laid off for a little period of time there, and I guess it was uh, probably uh, 
a hundred or so of us from Detroit, and we didn't all know each other at the time personally. But during that idle time, we started visiting each other's house throughout the day, playing different games, and lo and behold, this one guy introduced me to, to crack cocaine. And me not knowing what it was, I just, you know, was trying to fit in where I could get in, and I tried it, I tried it, and, and, and then I got hooked on it. And uh, it was a very dark part of my life. Uh, it causes me, it caused it me my first marriage. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell anyone, that's something, drugs, say no to drugs. And I will say that to the young children out there, and I will just, I will say it to adults as well. Mm -hmm. Say no to drugs, because th that was about 12 years I went through that addiction period. And mm -hmm. like I say, I lost my, uh, I lost a first wife. Uh, she was, she was good to me, and mm -hmm. but she couldn't. She was no competition for drugs. And one other thing that I would like to tell people is about it: if you're going through someone going through that, or you got someone in your family that's going through that, first of all, know that it is a disease. It's a, it's an illness, Doctor Brooks. It's, it's, it's nobody just want to wake up one day and say, hey, I want to be a drug addict. Okay. But if you allow yourself to, you know, to get into that and then it becomes an addiction and then that's when you have to have it. I remember numerous of times when I was going through my addiction and family didn't want me around them, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. Not that I ever took anything from them. They just didn't like my lifestyle and they didn't want me coming around them. And that was very crucial times. It was very, it was very times when I needed someone. I needed someone to, to just embrace me. And because I knew I wasn't the man that, you know, that I had started out to be and I knew I wasn't the man that God intended for me to be. Mm -hmm. But yet I had got caught up in this. And so all I wanted was a hug from my family members and tell me and just to tell me, uh, uh, bro, that's my nickname. That's what mm -hmm. they call me, bro. It's going to be all right. You know, we still love you. Mm -hmm. But I didn't get that. I didn't get that, Dr. Brooks, from family. And so uh, I felt like, you know, they turned on me, turned their back away from me. But uh, I still now today don't think it was good reason, but it did. And it brought me to this point and to the point to where I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I can remember vaguely uh, living in Texas, Texas, uh, out in Texas. And our, I had got to the point to where I just didn't want to live anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I contemplated suicidal because I was just, I wasn't who I wanted to be. I wasn't comfortable. I didn't like the George. I, I loved it myself, but I didn't like what I had turned into. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I never will forget that night. It was one night about one o'clock in the morning. I went outside and, and I cried out to God. I threw my head up. And this was before I knew I had gave my life to God. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know anything, but I said, if there is a God, I hope he can hear me. And I went outside of my door and I threw my head up in the air and I screamed with all I had. And I asked God to please forgive me and to help me. Mm -hmm. And, bro and uh, Dr. Brooks, he did. It didn't happen spontaneously. Okay. It took, you know, another, uh, I'll say a month to a month and a half, and I was free of it. But uh, I knew that God answered my prayer. And he took the taste out of my mouth, and mm. I said from that point that uh, I would spend the rest of my life uh, trying to serve him. At the same time, I was, uh, I was smoking, still smoking these cigarettes. And so... Uh, my doctor informed me that I had emphysema uh, in the year of 2007. Okay. And so that's when I started having my treatments for it, and I was uh, seeing a pulmonary doctor here, and uh, it was steady declining. As years go by, like, you say, like I was saying earlier, I had the oxygen tank, I had the nebulizers, but as the years go went by, it got worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And so the average person, uh, the oxygen level that you hold is 100%, uh, anywhere from 98% to 100 at least. That's good mm -hmm. oxygen level. Mm -hmm. Where well, mine's had left from 100% and it had got down to 18% and Whoa. it was declining. That's pretty low, Dr. Brooks. Right, right. And, and it's declining too. I, I don't know how much longer I would have lasted. If I had to guess, I probably would say uh, maybe another two to three months. Mm -hmm. Maybe that, if that. But anyway, the, uh, again, I, uh, I cried to God and I asked him for help. And uh, again, he, he heard my cry and he helped me. He opened up doors for me uh, so that I could have this operation. I st started going to Northwestern Hospital, downtown Chicago. 
And uh, when I met with the lung transplant team there, they told me that I would need to go through a testing period. So mm -hmm. a number of tests, testing all the other uh, vital organs in my body, because if I had had any other, any other organs going wrong, then they wouldn't have gave me the test. Okay. And okay. so uh, it took me a year to get to that point. Mm. And, uh, I know when I met you, uh, you had oxygen tank. Yeah, yes sir. And, uh, in, in Oxygen, uh, at, you at the Gideon <coughs> Missionary Baptist Church then. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether you were a deacon then or not, or just a member then. Uh, at the time that you well, met me, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that I was just a, uh, a member of okay. the church then, because I only became a deacon in uh, 2010. Oh, okay. 2010. Okay. And okay. I, want, I don't want to leave out uh, that uh, my now wife, my new wife that I have. Okay. Uh, her name is Lily. She's the love of my heart, and uh, I call her precious. And because she is, she's precious to me. And matter of fact, Dr. Brooke, there's a history with Lily and I. We go back to grade school. Lily and I was from the same oh. uh, town. We, we're both from, from Arkansas. Okay. I mean, she knew my parents, and I knew her parents, and so. We did that thing, what you call puppy love, you know? Okay. <laughs> well, I can okay. remember numerous times we were walking down, the, you know, the gravel roads and only by the moonlight. We didn't have a whole lot of street lights down there. We had moonlight. <laughs> so we was walking down there holding hands in hands. And uh, once she uh, she's completed high school, Lily, uh, her mother thought that she would, you know, try to have a better life for her. And she sent Lily to up to Zion. Oh. And uh, yeah, that, that crushed my heart. <laughs> uh, the love of my life it had left me, you know, but uh, nevertheless, it was some 30 years later that, that we united, reunited together. together some 30 years later, yes. Uh, wow. At that wow. time. But the good thing about that was that we both, we had nieces and nephews. Uh, my wife's brother was married to my twin sister. Oh, and my okay. twin sister and my wife's uh, brother, they united, they had seven children. Oh. And so the kids stayed in contact with their Aunt Lily, and, and one day she asked them, uh, did they know where I was? I, uh, and, she to and they told her yes. And they said, well, give mm -hmm. him a phone number, having to call me. So I did. I called her back in uh, 2006, and we talked over the phone a little bit. And, and uh, I said, well, you know, uh, uh, who you with? She said, nobody. Who you with? <laughs> I said, nobody. I said, well, you know. Remember those feelings we had for each other? You want to go up, want to make a try at it again? She said, yeah, but one thing, you got to come to come to Illinois. I'm not coming to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> right, and so right. I did, Dr. Brooks. I came here to uh, Illinois in, uh, in, uh, the, right at the latter part of uh, 2005. And uh, right away I came into, uh, I came into Gideon because I, I, I said I wanted to land my feet on solid ground as soon as I got here, coming to a new place. I mm -hmm. knew how easy it was to get back into the things that I used to do. You know, it's easy for, for, for addicts to find other addicts. That's no problem. And mm -hmm. so I got right away, I got in the church and, uh, and uh, I was admiring the brethren around the church, some of the, some of the brethren, most of them around there, that was deacons. And I, okay. said, I was saying it under my breath, oh, you know what, I, these brothers is doing a good thing, you know? And I was seeing them giving devotion, they, they was praying, they was reading scriptures, and and uh, they were singing hymns, and I like to sing also, Dr. Brooks. Mm -hmm. That's one of my God's given tip, uh, gift is singing. And uh, I told one of the brothers, I said, you know, I want to become a deacon too, just like you all. And uh, he quickly reminded me, he said, well, you know, in order to be a deacon, you, 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 you got to be married. He said, you and Miss Lily got to get married. Cool. And I said, okay. Now, that wasn't my only reason for marrying her. <laughs> I married her because I loved her, but I also wanted to be a deacon okay. in the church because okay. I wanted to get in the church and I wanted to do something, and I wanted to just give God my all in all. Mm -hmm. And so I did that. We, uh, my wife and I got married in uh, 2000 and, in, uh, in, in eight. Okay. Yeah, okay. October in 2008. And so uh, we've been married ever since, and she's been with me throughout my ordeal with my lungs. So forth. You, you mentioned that you were also affiliated with the um, the military lodge, we, oh, William Scruggs Military Lodge, too. Yes, uh, sir. Uh, that was another uh, path that uh, God allowed me to go down. 
And, uh, and I came through that by also through one of my deacons in my church. And, oh, okay. Uh, he was, uh, I, I stood back and I watched him for a long time, it afar wasn't, off. It wasn't Galls, was it? Yes, it was, Dr. Uh, no, Dr. Timothy Dr. Galls. Dr. Galls now. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Galls now, and he's an educator in the school system, you know. Uh -huh. And so I watched him, uh, Dr. Brooks, and you know, and I said, ah, I, I, something about that brother, I admired him. And then I kept seeing these emblems on his jacket, on his lapel, like, and so I asked him one day, I, you know, I, I knew somewhat what it was, but I didn't know what it was. And I, I told him, I said, uh, yeah, I want to be, I want to be a Mason too, especially when I learned that, you know, they do good charitable things. Okay. And, and so, okay. and, I, and I told him, and he didn't give me an answer right away. He, he, he uh, lingered on for another five or six months or so to see how much I really wanted to come into this. Yeah. Because so, it has to be on your own free will and accord. Right? Yes, it yeah. does. Yes, it has to be on your own. But like I say, uh, it was uh, one of our mottos is uh, good man's becoming a better man. Mm -hmm. And I liked that, that title, a good man coming, be, becoming a better man. Mm -hmm. First, you got to be a good man first. And so after everything that I've been through and, and, and all and, and where my life is at today, I think, well, you know, there's some might say none as good as God, but God, that's that's true. But I think I'm an okay guy. And so, uh, and if I can do anything to make myself a better person by getting out okay. here, uh, charity, spending charity. If I don't, you know, if I don't do it financially, then I do it with my time. Uh, I visit the sick and the shut in. My pastors, you know, taught me that from, from church. Mm -hmm. Visit the sick and the shut in and, 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 and help someone that's less fortunate than you are. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I said, yeah, that's what I want to do. And so I'm, I'm, I sit there now and uh, it's been good. Uh, mm -hmm. Masonry has been good for me. In this, uh, you, you know, in talking with you now and uh, the uh, audience is uh, looking at you like uh, nothing has ever happened to you <laughs> medically, you know. Yes. Uh, but tell us about the challenge and experiences that you went through it. Like I say, when I met you, you had your oxygen tank and so forth, and mm -hmm. so now, but now you can, um, and, and we'll go through some of the things there, but, uh, you know, you can run, and uh, and mm -hmm. uh, probably the, there's a limit to running, but you can run, and you can, um, just like nothing has ever happened, but tell about the ordeal that you went through, a double lung transplant well i first would like to say dr brooks is this uh that uh during my struggling time i i always kept the faith mm -hmm. i had faith and so i wasn't the kind of person that was going to you know as this emphysema was taking its toll on me i still was uh i wasn't at the point to giving up you know laying mm -hmm. staying in bed or sitting in some rocking chair or uh. staying in the house so I kept going, I stayed motivated. I kept uh, attending church, you know, I get up and go to church on Sundays and, and, and attended some during the mid midweek. Okay. And uh, we also had a men's group where we would uh, meet on Tuesdays. And so I stayed active, I, mm -hmm. I stayed active in doing that. And that's what kind of, that's one of the uh, points that kind of helped me get over. So you were self-motivated. I, I was self-motivated and, and I did that by just just faith that one day that uh, it'll be different, that God would help me. And so, uh, and then I had, the, I had the community that I live in, you know, neighbors and next door neighbors, they was all uh, supporting me. Mm -hmm. And my church, they supported me so well. I can't give enough thanks to Gideon Missionary Baptist Church and everyone there. Uh, I wanna thank you all and I wanna tell you all that uh, I love you. Uh, my heart, my love go from one <laughs> heart to another, and, and I believe that they love me too, Dr. Oh, Brooks. Yeah, sure. And so, as I indicated before, during this struggle, there was a period when I had to have these other tests, and I didn't quite have enough uh, insurance coverage. Oh. So, uh, thank God for uh, Obamacare. Uh, in late October of uh, 2017, 2016. Mm -hmm. I signed up for the Obamacare. And after signing up for the Obamacare, I had to wait until the first of the year, which was January 2017, okay. in order for it to, yeah. to, to, to be qualified for it. And when I did that, I was, uh, I picked up uh, Blue Cross and Blue Shield. 
Okay. That was my secondary insurance. My first primary insurance was Medicare. My secondary insurance was Blue Cross and Blue Shield because the doctors and all had told me down there at Northwestern that uh, it was going to be very expensive. It's, it's expensive, I think, it's probably maybe a half a million dollar surgery, okay. uh, $250,000 or more surgery, and that the medication and so forth would be uh, very expensive. So they told me the importance of having a, a secondary insurance. So I did that, and, and it took me a... Uh, from January until uh, uh, March, or well, I went through that whole year being prepped, you know, going down to Northwestern there, checking out all other parts of my body. Okay. And so uh, the one thing they told me after I made the clearance, I got clearance on, they said, well, Mr. Payne, uh, basically you're a healthy man except for your lungs. As, you know, other than your lungs, you're, in, you're a healthy man. Mm -hmm. And so that motivated me also to know that, that it wasn't anything else going on. Mm -hmm. And so they, when I left there, they said, well, now that you have made the donor list, mm -hmm. and I made the donor list in, in January, they said, what we want you to do is we want you to go home, pack a bag, and set it by your door because when, we, when the phone call come in, uh, you need to make haste down to Northwestern. I think they had uh, something like a six-hour window oh. between uh, taking the lungs from one body, from the donor's body, and putting it into to my body. It was a six-hour window. So mm -hmm. I got that call. I never will forget it. Uh, it was on a Wednesday about 10 a.m. in the morning. And the call was very shortly after they told me to go home. And so I did as they instructed me to, and I went down there, and it's just been... Is this a, a v un unusual uh, procedure uh, that's done, having a double uh, lung transplant? Well, I, I've been told that it, it's, it's more, 20 years ago it wasn't so likely, it wasn't common. It wasn't, okay. you know, they was, they've been doing lung transplant for a few years, but a double lung transplant, yeah. uh, it wasn't that feasible some 20 years ago, but now it's, the uh, technology has been so advanced in, in, in medicine and everything mm -hmm. to where now it's a uh, it's pretty common procedure, procedure. And there's a lot, you might have heard a lot about a single lung, oh, yeah. but yeah. I had to have both of my lungs was, was tarnished and I had emphysema in both my lungs. So I needed, Whoa. I needed that double lung. And, uh, and that's what I received down at, at uh, Northwestern, uh, hospital or my doctor, the lung surgeon was uh, named Dr. Barati and uh, I had a medical uh, doctor over, you know, after the surgery for my pulmonary. Her name was uh, also Dr. Barat, mm -hmm. Barati. It was Dr. Barat was the surgeon, Barati was the, uh, was my uh, pulmonary doctor. Okay. And so I owe a lot of thanks to Northwestern and uh, all those uh, peoples down there that helped me from uh, social workers, Mike and uh, my uh, nurses. I have to congratulate uh, uh, your wife too for yeah. staying with you and supporting you uh, a thousand percent, you she, know? She, she that, that must have been love, you know? She, she did, Dr. Brooks. <laughs> the whole time I was going through my struggle, uh, she was supporting me. She, she, she was there throughout okay. the whole time. And so uh, I love her and I'm, you know, I thank God for having her because during this time when I needed that support, yeah. uh, you know, the doctors wouldn't do the surgery if I didn't have the support. And so they asked me to, uh, to have a num number of people, at least two or three of them, if not more, that would help her because it would be a 24 hour. Uh, Coverage on that. Yes, yeah, I would have to have somebody to help me for 24 hours. And uh, I had uh, some people to help me. Uh, Two or three people stuck this, with me. Just to see you now, if people had seen you then, you know, uh, when I first met you, mm -hmm. and to see you now, you know, just like a, uh, <laughs> like a, the Bible say, a new creature. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> a I've new been creature, given a, you know? a new life, uh, right, Dr. Right, Brooks. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I, it was a struggle. And uh, there was times when I couldn't walk uh, two I couldn't walk a good four or five feet without having to stop and grab host or something, you know. And, mm -hmm. and then with the oxygen bringing it to me too, you know, I was limited. I was in, I was in the house, but I had a, uh, a concentrator that con makes, produce its own oxygen. And okay. so I was limited in the house about how far I could go, but I had a long line that would allow me to go to the kitchen, at least from the kitchen throughout the other part of the house. Mm -hmm. And so uh, 
Uh -huh. so it, it is it's so important to have great, and they, they knew this too, the support, mm -hmm. uh, as much support as possible, you support. know. Yes. And, and you had that with the, with the church, your with family, church. and also yes. the brothers in your, in your lodge. In my so, lodge, you know, I, you know. I want to go back a little bit and, and, and to tell people, yeah, it's important to have a, a support group like that, you know, church-based, where you could have uh, your church members. They love you and they, they'll support you. Mine's did tremendously. I, I set up, uh, before I had my surgery, uh, they thought it was good that I have a, a GoFund, a Fund Me page. Oh. And so I had a fundraising page set up to help Hope Live. It's an organization that, you know, set up funds and, and, and you can, people can donate money in it to it. And I, and I had my profile uh, taken and, and I had it put it up, posted in different places. Okay. But my church was one of the first places that donated to that, putting money into my fundraiser. Mm. And, and, and yeah, they are, uh, and one, just one Sunday, uh, my pastor said, uh, our brother need us here, uh, Deacon Payne need us, and he need our help. And he said uh, he needed not only in prayers, he needed financially. And uh, the church came through for me. They took up some over 2,000 some odd dollars for me in one day. Wow. And I was so, I was so uh, blown away with that. I really just didn't know that I was, you know, I was worth that much to someone, that I was loved that much. And, uh, but they showed me, they was there. And then I want to give credit I want to give some thanks to uh, the Masonic, my Masonic brothers in uh, the Grand Lodge downtown. I went up into Springfield, and I went up there with an oxygen tank okay. and, and oxygen in my nose. And, uh, and I went up there, and, and a couple of the brothers uh, knew about, they saw me struggling, and they knew how I was going through this. And I told them that I was getting ready. I needed a double lung transplanted, and I wasn't financially, didn't have the money to do yeah. it, and I needed yeah. help with them. And I told them about the website of Help Hope Live that I was on, yeah. but they also did the same thing. In that one setting there, they took up a collection for me and they passed a hat around uh, to maybe two, 300 brothers that was there. Okay. And they okay. all donated to me and that was very, that was very well. Well, tell us about this uh, surgery now. Uh, did they, like heart operation, I guess they uh, go right and um, crack the ribs and so forth, but mm -hmm. did they open, uh, open you up in the front? Uh, to put the lungs in, or how did they? Well, I can only tell about what I looked like after the surgery was. <laughs> and uh, no, I didn't have the vertical. They didn't go in me straight up, you know. But okay. I'm, I'm sure they probably had to have some, some, uh, some bone cutting tools. The, the surgery went from underneath my left armpit oh. all the way across my chest, okay. underneath my breath, until up under my right armpit. Okay. That's the way I was cut. And uh, I guess they opened, I used to tease people uh, that I used to tell my story now. I said, man, they opened me up like a, 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 pop, a box of Newport cigarettes, you know, no. Newport <laughs> cigarettes they opened up. I mean, right. I can make fun about them cigarettes, but they're not, it's not funny about it and it's no joke. But I make mm -hmm. light of that about it when I tell people how they open me up and put lungs in me. So I don't know how they do it. I know they had to probably go behind some ribs and so forth. and. Uh, to get it done, but all I know that it was uh, the last thing that I remember before going on that table and going under the anesthesia is was that uh, I went in with faith that God yeah, would uh, yeah, bring me yeah. through this and that I would see my loved ones on the, uh, again someday. And so the next thing I knew, uh, I was surrounded about, I think probably about 14, anywhere from 14 to 16 doctors around my bedside, you know, on this yeah. table. And I said, my God, what is all these people doing here? They when were I saying that I, this is a miracle on the table. Here, yes, yes. And each bed. one of them had a, a, a part to play in this surgery. Okay. You know? So each one of those doctors that was there, they had something okay. to do in this surgery. And uh, so uh, it was about an eight-hour surgery. And after the surgery, I had, uh, I had uh, some complications for, for almost, uh, I would say, three weeks to a month. Mm. I, had, uh, I was getting uh, air trapped in between my, uh, my lungs and my chest cavity. It was the air getting trapped there and that air didn't need to be there. Okay. So they kept having to, you know, it was fluid build up, that's what it okay. was. Okay. And they had to keep, you know, inserting tubes in me to draw this fluid out. I mean, that was painful, Dr. Brooks. That probably was the most painful thing about the whole surgery. Uh, another thing I tease people about, I say, man, uh, uh, they, poked holes in me about six different times. It looked like I had been shot six times. 
But nevertheless, uh, it was a process, and it still is a process, Dr. Brooks. I, uh, I'm on a lot of medication. That's what I, I take say. quite a bit of medication. But what's that to life, you know? Uh, I'm so mm -hmm. thankful to God that, you know, he gave me a new life, and um, I'm healthier again, and I've gained weight. I'm back at my 20-something, uh, my uh, th early 30 weight. I've never been a big fellow. Okay. But uh, I'm up to about 165 pounds, and that's more wow. than I ever weighed, even okay. in my 20s and 30s. Wow. And so, uh, you know, face filling out a little bit. <laughs> okay, okay. Yep, and I'm able to, the most important thing about it is God's giving me my 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 gift. I'm able to sing again. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. You, tell, you say in your early, you you love to sing. I love to sing, Dr. Brooks. I Before this from, program is over, uh, I'm going to set aside some time for you to just uh, uh, sing sing the song that I <laughs> I love and and. and other people in the community love too. Okay. And that's cooling waters. Oh my lord, cooling <laughs> waters. Okay. So we go. We gonna give you opportunity because we we. And do you sing a cappella? Yes, I can sing. You oh, know, by because, myself, I don't. Because we didn't have all the instruments mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. Arkansas and mm -hmm. back then, where you. Yeah, I, did. I started yeah. singing out in the fields. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I didn't have no band behind me then. <laughs> I was just as mean the good Lord and. And, and my mother, you know, she taught us spiritual songs and, and hymns. Okay, so, yeah, okay. I, I, I but you had a role model, though, for that, though, didn't you? Uh, for for cool, cooling Waters. Yes. Uh, well, Lee Williams is one of my favorite okay. gospel artists. And okay. he's the one that he and Melvin Williams are brothers. The, Mel, the Williams brother, because I think it's about three of the brothers, but they're not, they're not related to Lee. Okay. And uh, so he's one of my favorite. And I learned to sing that song, Cooling Water, uh, before I came here, before I came to Illinois, I was uh, in another church out there in Texas, and uh, I first started singing it out there, and uh, the pastor, the prophet that I was under, I come out from under a prophet, he loved that song, and so okay. he had me to yeah. sing it to him all the time, and so I just... Without, without instruments, too. Without right? instruments. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, I had instruments there, but, you know, I had, like I say... Uh, when you're singing for God, Dr. Brooks, you don't need no instrument. Right. You know, it's, I don't do anything. I, it's not for self-glorification. You know, I don't, I don't do it to glorify myself, but I do it. It's another part of ministry. You know, God is, is written. It's scripture, you know, mm. sing, song, and play instruments, strings, instruments. I don't play any instruments, but I can open my mouth up a little <laughs> bit and sing. And so I'm still glad that God gave me that ability back to do that. And now, do you... Uh, uh I know you, you spent a lot of time in the house. How long did you spend from the hospital to rehab? How did you, uh, <clears throat> how long did you spend in the hospital? In the hospital. <laughs> after well, surgery. After surgery. Uh, well, another thing, uh, I had a, to God be the glory, I had a speedy recovery, mm. Dr. Brooks. I amazed, amazed the doctors. It wasn't me. It was God all along. All the time. So I don't take no credit for me. But, uh, I stayed in the hospital less time than the average person that went through a type of surgery that I had, wow. double lung transplant. There have been, I've been told that if some patient had to stay in the hospital for two months, up to three and four months in the hospital after yeah. the surgery. But uh, I was only in there in the hospital after surgery, uh, I was in there three weeks, almost a month. What? Yes. For that type of surgery? For that type of surgery. And Dr. Brooks, God strengthened me enough to where I was walking a mile in the hospital while I was still in hospital stay before I got released. I was up on my feet and walking a mile. Amazing. That's the nurses told me, said, well, you walk around this, you know, because that was a part of the, uh, the rehab. They, would, they didn't want you to lay in bed, so they want you yeah, up. Yeah, right. And they would get you out walking. And so they would <laughs> always bring this nurse to me. Uh, and the nurse had to walk me three times a day. Yeah. And the nurse said, I was walking, I was, I was getting it down that, down that <laughs> aisle. And uh, they said, well, man, I'm getting my workout too. But anyway, yeah, I walked around that nursing station 13 times. They told me that that was to be a mile. And before I left there, I walked around there uh, 26 times. So I, I can say I walked uh, two miles in the mm -hmm. hospital before I was released to come home. And uh, I never will forget one of the doctors. Uh, they were so mm -hmm. amazed. And they said, one of them told me, said, uh, Mr. Payne, I don't know who it is that you're praying to, but whoever it is, he's coming through for you. Great, and uh, I was so touched, you know, that was just to go to show that, you know, 
uh, it was God there all the time, God in the surgeon's hands. Now, I give them thanks to all the doctors and surgeons, and I give God the credit for God in their hands. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, my hospital stay was short. Hmm. Uh, I was there about three weeks, and then I was released to come home. And that's when the real test came in, you know, at home. Yeah, and so I, yeah. I needed that special attention around me, and which I got from friends and, and from my wife. Uh, so I did, wasn't there a um, home care program that they sent nurses uh, uh, out to, and a therapist out to give you some assistance? Yes, there was. That, that, that was a... a uh, a system that they sent out, you know, to check my vital signs and and uh, uh, to walk me, you know, to walk yeah, me the down the halls and physical so forth. therapists and yes. the occupational therapists. Yes, and, so and I came back and I had to <clears throat> see. I had to uh, let me backtrack a little bit. I had to get into a physical therapy. This is for anyone that uh, might be thinking about having this done. Uh, I was told that I need to get in physical therapy so I can strengthen my body going yes. into this surgery. Oh. And so I was in a program at uh, Vista East. I was in a, a pulmonary uh, program to where I was in therapy where I was walking on the treadmill, riding the bike, and lifting, lifting a few weights oh, and scratching okay. and doing the arm legs and stuff, so forth. And so they was told me uh, uh, that that would be good for me going into surgery. And I would like to thank all of them too that was there, uh, okay. that was there to help me. And uh, and so after I got out of uh, the hospital and at home and got well enough to get back into therapy, I went back to Vista East and got more therapy. Mm -hmm. And so, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's therapy in it. So, you know, it's, you're gonna have to put some work in it, but it's, it's well worth it. It's been worth it to me. Uh, I'm able to do things now, Dr. Brooks, that I haven't did in the past, I wanna say 15, 16 years. Uh, God has opened up the floodgate for me. He done did so much for me within one year. He mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. He uh, he gave me two new lungs. Okay. Uh, and uh, there, you know, the wife and I, he he, he reunited me uh, and with my marriage and made that stronger because we had to we had to live separately for a little period of time. I had to get out of the house that uh, we was both sharing. Yep. I had to leave mm -hmm. out of there for for various reasons. You know, it wasn't yep. good for my lungs, and so I went and I, and I got an apartment. So the house was just there, but the wife was over there at the apartment staying with me the most of the time. <laughs> right. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's work in it. So. Well, actually, you could, uh, <coughs> your, your, your knowledge and experience and so forth could be used in, 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 in counseling uh, other youngsters, you know, uh, about smoking, too, you know. That, yes. I, 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 I know that several people will say, well, I had... Um, uh, I know adults that uh, pass away with cancer mm -hmm. and so forth, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, never smoked. Right. Y you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I mean, that's, that's no reason to, to smoke and knowing that it's detrimental that, to your body. You that's know? right. That's right. Uh, excuse me. My father, my biological father, he, uh, he, he passed and went on from cancer, but he was a man that he never smoked a cigarette a day in his life. Okay, and he that's never one drank example a, there. And he never drank a drop of alcohol a day in his life, but yet still he died from cancer. So there's numerous ways of catching cancer, mm -hmm. numerous of ways. And so I, uh, I, didn't ha I wasn't diagnosed with cancer, but the, the emphysema that was set up in my lung, it was solely to smoking. The smoking had a great part of it. It was smoking. It was the drug addictions, you know, crack cocaine and, and uh, you know, it's kind of, I don't like to go into yeah, you know, right, how it's yeah, done, yeah. but the people, you know, some people out there know it's how they inhale that stuff and, and so yeah. forth. So that was damaging to my lung, all that heat on my lung. And then I worked, uh, I worked in, in Chrysler in the automobile industry and uh, I was a painter there. So I know how to paint a car from bare metal to clear coat. Okay. So, and, and back in that time in 76, Chrysler didn't have too great of a mask. They had just maybe like, hospital mask that you put on. So a lot of that probably filtered into my lungs too. So I contributed my lungs condition on three different things. But I would like to say to anyone, uh, especially the young kids, uh, just as, as I would ask you to say no to drugs, I would like to also 
say no to the cigarettes too because they're not they're not good for you they're no good for you and, and i don't know what they're putting into these cigarettes yeah, nowadays yeah, yeah. tobacco company is not you know they have to put the warning label on the cigarettes but uh the more people smoking the more you know that uh they benefiting from that financially wise. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I would say to the young children, uh, please don't smoke. Uh, stay at home with your parents, you know, and, and get a good education. I want to, uh, that was one of the things, Dr. Brooks, that I also failed to get, but I know I've heard that it's never too late to learn, but I didn't get a full education as, I, as if I wished I had today because. Uh, well, you were traveling around a lot too, too then. Uh, um you mentioned about the different locations you numerous numerous of cities I lived in. Uh, when I left Arkansas, I went to Detroit and stayed for nine years, and left Detroit. And then, uh, the reason leaving for Detroit was because of the job uh, with Chrysler. They I was laid off for four years, and they told me, called me up one day, and said, if you want to reunite with Chrysler, you would have to be willing to relocate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked where, and they said St. Louis, and they paid all the moving expenses and everything. I said, yeah, let me go. You know, I'm ready mm -hmm. to go because mm -hmm. I was out of work for almost four years. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I left from Detroit and went to St. Louis. Now, I lived in St. Louis for 18 years. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was where, you know, the dark side of my life came. And, and, but I left when I was cleaning, got, wanted to clean myself up. I had to leave St. Louis. I uh, I wanted to go in a different, I wanted to make a geographical change. I wanted to go around somewhere I didn't know people. I didn't have no friends because as long as I was there, you know, you're only as good as your company that you keep. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this to, to anybody, especially the young children. If you keep bad company, then it's going to rub off on you. You're going to do bad things. You're not going to want to go to school. You want to hang out. You want to smoke uh cigarettes you might want to get involved in drugs you might want to get involved in gang and all that kind of stuff and none of that's no good to you but i i'm a big advocate even though i don't have i'm advocate please by all means children get a good education it'll take you so far in life now i am blessed and, and I'm, i've come a long way in life dr brooks but uh i talk to educated people okay. so i kind of self i, I get self-educated just by being around educated people and uh, it make me feel more self-worthy. And mm -hmm. uh, again, I By being around uh, Dr. Galls, and uh, you feel that uh, you're a doctor sometimes, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it, it, ex hearing him express himself and then you express yourself too, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you, you, you never know that, uh, that uh, I guess, I guess he's, he's a doctor there because you're, you're both are friends, real yeah, yeah. close friends. Yeah. yeah, we are close friends. And uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Timothy Galls, he was a, he was a deacon in the church, and he, okay. he held seven different ministries, you know, in the church, men ministry. I think he started that up, started that program at Gideon. Oh. And, uh, and so, you know, he, he, he has his doctor. He, he's, he's funny. He tell me, he'll tell anybody, he said, uh, yeah, I'm a doctor, but don't get sick. Oh, I can't yeah. help you. So he's a, doc a doctor in education. Yeah, right, right. And so, yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's been a role model for me, but my biggest role model has been my pastor. He's, oh, yeah. oh I, I, I love him. We love him at Gideon. We love him to death. And so he's mm -hmm. been great. He was preceded by uh, a pastor, let's see, H.D. Cook, I guess. H.J. Cook. H.J. Cook, That's all right. Heard, yeah. And he's from uh, Arkansas, too. Yeah. Dr. Cook's is. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't, no, I didn't know that. Another uh, Arkansas. But yeah. So, yeah, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Well, okay, what, what about, um, do you have any time for leisure time activities? Yeah, well, sure. I make, I have leisure time. Uh, being a new homeowner, you know. Uh, oh, okay. Being a new homeowner, and now that I'm able to do things around the house, uh, I'm trying to, you know, fix up. You know, there's always something you can do around oh, the house. Oh, you yeah. see something that, you know, that's not, not in place or whatever. So, like I say, I'm able to go out and I'm able to mow the lawn, and uh, I have a push mower, so I got to push this lawn, and I have a pretty good sized backyard. Okay. And so I'm able to do that now. I've been up on the roof. I've been cleaning out gutters. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm washing and waxing my own car, my car, my wife's car. And those things I hadn't been able to do in, in 15 years. No because physically, of my physical effects that you feel. I've had no, no, no side effects from it at all. Of course, you know, I pace myself. I know how, how yeah, far to push yeah, myself. Yeah. But uh, I've had no, no repercussions, none whatsoever. Nothing that caused me to go back to. Northwestern Hospital. 
right, for, right, for, for right, something. Right. You're not here doing something that I shouldn't have done. I mentioned about uh, the cost of medication. Mm -hmm. I, I know you have, you have, so you have Medicare, you know, as a primary, mm -hmm. then you got Blue Cross Blue mm -hmm. Shield, mm -hmm. but it must be quite expensive and uh, you take quite a f few medicines every day. I take quite a bit of med medication throughout the day, three times a day. And uh, what helped me was the medication is expensive. There's one medication I, that I take is uh, cost $2,000. No, no, I'm sorry, $4,000. There's one medication that I'm taking. It costs four thousand dollars. For how and That's where my insurance is taking care of. That that's not out of my pocket. Four four thousand dollars a year. No, four thousand uh, uh, dollars prescription. Per prescription. prescription. Yeah, there's one medication that I'm taking. It costs four thousand dollars per prescription. Wow. And so that was that's that's what they told me. They said, you know, uh, you would need this insurance coverage to help. Because uh, they told me, they said, Howard Hughes couldn't sustain this kind of <laughs> medical, this kind of. Uh, prescription coverage, you know, and he, Howard Hughes was pretty, you know. Then well, you man. are a special person, not not only to uh, uh, your associates, but to God. You're a special person to God. Well, that's, God is using you. That's good. I'm, 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 I'm happy to hear you say that, Dr. Brooks, and that's where, that's the position that I'm in. I want to be used by him, and I want to give my testimony. And uh, I was so delighted when you asked me to come on this show and tell someone or give them just give them my history and uh, I said that uh, so I know what helps somebody in other words if I could help somebody mm -hmm. along the way mm -hmm. then my living will not be in vain that's, that's right and I feel you have the same testimony yes sir I do and you know mm -hmm. what I love I'll say this you know, we, we go to church every day. Okay. We go to church going to church. Okay. And what I mean by that is we pass somebody. We can look to the left or look to the right. We're going to see somebody. We might see somebody that's struggling in some hard times. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, it might be some alcoholic person. It might be some drug addict person. It might be some mother. I'll say this, some mother or some daughter that's out there figuring she have to do this to support her kids. You know, different things. But <clears throat> there are, they're human beings, Dr. Brooks. You know, especially the ladies out there, you know, that is somebody's daughter. That's right. There's somebody's mother, you know. And so I'll say to the ladies, especially the young ladies that's in school, you know, make the guys respect you. You know, have mm -hmm. don't have them calling you. There's no fun in them calling you an H word or a B word. Well, that's, 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 that's degrading you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. give, mm -hmm. make, them, make these young men respect you. And then when you go to school and get your education and you demand this and you know and you say there's gonna, a time and a place for everything. And mm -hmm. so uh, I'm happy that uh, we are at William Shrug. We just, just this week, we uh, gave a scholarship out to, uh. to a young lady that uh, finished high school and she had a 4.2 some point grade average okay. and she's wanting to go to college and William Shrub we got together and we we made a donation to her towards her scholarship fund mm -hmm. and so uh, yeah uh, I like talking to those people I like stopping and talking to those people because mm -hmm. uh, well, there's like, somebody yeah. that I need well, I'd like for you that. to do and I promise the audience uh, we had just have a few minutes left mm -hmm. and I'd like you to give a a few minutes uh, too uh, on uh, cooling water. Now <laughs> you mentioned that you you sing a cappella. You, you you don't have to sing. You have to have instruments all the time. And uh, in, in in the fields, I used to sing too. You know, mm -hmm, you didn't have mm -hmm, instruments. Mm -hmm. But just give us um, a little background. Okay. Of, of cooling water. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's, it might sound good to me, but I don't know how it's going to sound to anybody. Else. But yeah, Doctor Brooks, I can do that too. That's okay. a part of my story. And it goes like this. Okay. My soul was sinking in a world of sin. Mm -hmm. But grace and mercy, it took me in. It took my feet out of the miry clay and placed them on upon a rock to stay. And oh, what a relief it was when God rescued me. Mm -hmm. He loosed the chains that had me bound, and then he set me free, and it felt like cooling water, cooling water. It felt like cooling water, 
Cooling water from grandma's well. Sleepless nights and so much pain. I couldn't see no sunshine, nothing but rain. But God said, weeping may endure for a night. But in the morning, it will be all right. And oh, what a relief it was when God rescued me. Mm -hmm. He loosed the chains that had me, that had me bound. And then he set me free. He felt like, it felt like, just like, just like cooling water from grandma's well. And it felt like cooling water it felt like cooling water when they saved my soul it felt like when he made me whole it felt just like it felt good of that cooling water just like i knew that it would y'all just like i knew that it would y'all when he raised me it fell just like, and I'm reminded of another water. And I'm reminded of another water. When they took me down to that water, when they took me down to a muddy pond to be baptized, they took me down to be baptized. Well, let me tell you what happened to me. They baptized me in the name of the Father. They baptized me in the name of the Son. They baptized me in the name of the Holy Ghost. And then they all, they all made one. But that ain't all, y'all. When I came up out that water, I had a new walk. I just didn't walk quite the same. When I came up out that water, I had love in my heart. When I came up out that water, I had joy all in my heart. And another thing, it changed my mind, and I couldn't think that same way. It changed my heart. I had a different word to say. It changed me, and I didn't want, I didn't want to just live. I wanted something that I could feel. How about you today? Praise God for that water. Praise God for that water. Praise God for that water. Has anybody been dipped? Has anybody been dipped down? Is there anybody here I want to know? Have you been dipped down, dipped mm. down in that water? Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Dr. Thank you very Bruce. much. And uh, I, if anyone uh, want to hear more of this, come to Gideon Missionary, Missionary Baptist, Baptist Church, Church, 1501. 1500 Ridgeland. Uh, 1500 Ridgeland. Ridgeland and Yeoman on in the Yeoman. corner. And uh, Waukegan, Illinois, Waukegan, where Illinois. the Wade A. Stevens is a pastor. Yes, sir. Thank you very much again. All right, and, Dr. And, Brooks. And uh, it's been great, very enlightening to hear your personal testimony. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Community Forum. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host. <laughs>